Hello and welcome to Where the Road Rises, Law Lessons Legacy, a show sharing powerful tools for you and those you love. We're all in this heroic journey together, the same longings, asking the same questions. Where the Road Rises shares the answers and stories and sources that lead us to them. So pull up a chair. We've been waiting for you. Today, we begin a new segment on lessons, personal growth and inspiration. Over the next weeks, we'll explore Back Pocket Skills, a self-help journey of nine essential skills I designed in 2013 to help my clients, students and audiences make peace with the past, create a vision for their future, and get into action towards their goals. This program earned me a Woman of Substance Award in 2016. It continues to inspire me and others, and I'm happy to share it with you. First, we'll take an overarching look at the program and its objectives, and then we'll get started with skills one and two, embracing gratitude, and banishing blame. We'll cover the entire program, skill by skill, in the weeks ahead. Back Pocket Skills is about you living a magnificent life that you love, about you recognizing your genius and sharing it with the world, and about you discovering along the way success, peace, and happiness. In this program, you play the starring role. You are at the center. This is your chance, your moment, for your voice, your truth, your destiny. In the words of Neil Gaiman, the only thing you have that no one else has is you. We aim to lift you from where you are to where you want to be. You might be relatively content with your life, but have a vague sense there has to be more to it than this. You might be burning for what you know life has to offer, but which has so far eluded you. Or you may be convinced by now that life has destined you to a smaller share, the cracked cup of what is available that success and happiness are for the worthy and talented, and a grand canyon stands between you and them. This program shows you belong exactly where you want to be and how to get there, and I guarantee it will be a rich and productive journey for you. You will learn not just what the skills are, but how to develop them. Make them second nature to you. Have them with you at all times in your back pocket. This work has grown from my fascination with life's possibilities, from my journey through it and my search for its secrets. They reflect my deepest beliefs on the source of happiness and success, and I live by these skills every day. I practice them at the office, with my clients, in my marriage, with my children. If I falter in my path, which we all do from time to time, I use them to regain my footing. Skills one through five in this program are relatively straightforward. Be eternally grateful, get rid of blame, recognize your potential, expect nothing less than the success you seek, Create a first-class vision for your life and keep it alive with action and energy. This is a winning formula and practiced diligently cannot, cannot fail. But what if you're a model student on your way to meeting your goals, a massive roadblock shows up, the economy turns upside down, your marriage fails, you get a devastating diagnosis or someone in your life gets sick and dies. Skills six and seven will save you when things come apart. 
and you have to reach beyond that winning formula. Learning to recognize the lights and shadows in everything, in failure and loss as well as success and achievement is truly life-changing. You will never look at a circumstance as all good or all bad again. When you fully accept no absolutes, no ultimate good or bad, black or white, right or wrong, you can come away from attachment to a particular result. And that leads to the end of those great enemies, fear and worry. This is a tremendously liberating concept. With fear and worry out of the picture, nothing can stand in your way. You are ready to soar. The last skills, eight and nine, are the icing on the cake, the capstone of my education, and I hope yours, for they will help you live in love and kindness, awe and wonder, and deep abiding joy. They teach you how, on this bright day of the frost and sun, to not sleep before evening. Skill number one is gratitude. Before you take a single step towards positive change in your life, be grateful for what you have now, where you're at this minute. You do not need to thank a particular deity if that's not your inclination. Just focus on your gifts and strengths and feel grateful for them. Give thanks for your healing what does not need healing, for your challenges and lessons. One of the first books that influenced me deeply on my journey was a gift in the mid-90s of Sarah Von Braunig's Simple Abundance. At that time, I was in the fraught, ambition environment of law school, fairly new to the US, single, often lonely, and struggling to find my way. I would read Simple Abundance in the middle of the bustling law library and feel I was on a desert island. It helped me get perspective, feel peace and gratitude. The author advocates listing five things every night you are grateful for and your focus quickly switches from lack to abundance. In all things give thanks. If you're frustrated with your progress in one area, Look at what you have achieved in another. Take stock. Be grateful for your education, your job, your relationship, your family, career, hobbies, friends, your home. We all have such rich inventory. I listened to Cheryl Woodun recently, writer of Half the Sky, a book about the appalling condition of women in many parts of the world. She said we have hit the jackpot here in North America. She had taken a girl she rescued from sex slavery in Thailand to visit a friend in Chicago. This young girl was stunned by a bird feeder in the garden. That someone had so much themselves and the extra time and resources to feed the birds while she struggled to stay alive. Gratitude is for me the holy grail. Every morning when I wake up, I run thank you through my head to stir my energy and enthusiasm for the day. I pad out of bed saying thank you as each foot touches the ground. I see the words thank you inked on my feet and I stamp them into the earth as I walk. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Gratitude rescues me when I am exhausted, makes everything better, for you cannot give thanks and feel scarcity at the same time. The skill of gratitude is number one on my list because not only does it have premium in itself, but without it, the other skills we will discuss have little value. Without the capacity for deep gratitude, it doesn't matter how successful we become. Happiness will always elude us. Skill number two is banish blame. Take complete responsibility for your life, where you are right now this minute. Own it all, the good, the bad, and the ugly. It doesn't matter who or what is at fault. I ask you this not to have you feel blame or guilt. I ask you this because if you own it all, 
everything that's in your life has been, then you have the power to change it. By casting blame, you're giving responsibility to someone other than you for your unhappiness and, most significantly, the power to change it. Do not give anyone the power over your happiness. If you take responsibility for your life, regardless of how dire you see it, you have taken the first step towards changing it. The one thing you have control over in your life is your mind and emotions, actions and reactions. Let that blame go. I asked you this not to make the others in your life happier and more peaceful, although that may very well be a consequence. I ask you this because it'll make you, your life, happier and more peaceful. The same goes for resentments you carry against others. If there is something or someone in your life making you miserable, bless and accept it and them. This is hard to do. Louise Hay, one of my first spiritual teachers, recommends an exercise where you imagine the difficult person on a stage spotlights, confetti, receiving gifts, prizes, accolades. Why? Because to do so will dissolve the bitterness in your mind that is harming you, holding you back, making you unhappy. I have tried this exercise many times with difficult colleagues, family members, business associates with great success. An amazing transformation takes place when you switch feelings towards your perceived enemy. Stuart Wilde, a British thought leader who taught spirituality based on Taoism, recommended a mental exercise in which you reduce your enemy in size until they fit into your palm and then just blow them away, blessing and releasing them from your life. When I worked in criminal defense, we had an elderly judge in our courtroom whom we saw as prosecution-oriented, sexist, racist, angry, difficult to work with. I had become despondent, worn down after months of lost cases, motions, perceived injustice. So I tried this exercise on my way into work one Friday morning. And when I got to the courthouse, I found that judge had taken his first sick day, sick day in 30 years. I tell you, I prayed for him often that weekend. But by Monday, he was back at work. The knife age stress that had built up in the courtroom was gone and the situation was resolved. Carrying resentment towards others has been likened to drinking poison and expecting someone else to die. Bless and accept your circumstances and they will cease to hurt you or have any power over you. And that's the whole point, to heal and build and harmonize you. A wonderful illustration of this concept is the tale of the ungrateful Chinese Empress. Two monks, an older and younger monk, are walking in ancient China. When they encounter a river that has overflown its banks, a haughty empress was unable to cross without spoiling her silken robes. She was scolding her attendants who couldn't help her because they were laden down with her packages. The monks picked her up and carried her over the swollen river. She didn't even say thank you. She just shoved them out of the way and departed. Well, as the monks continued on their journey, the young monk was brooding, preoccupied. Finally, he couldn't stand it anymore. He burst out, oh, that empress was so selfish and rude. She was mean to her service. She didn't even say thank you to us. To which the old monk replied, I set the Empress down hours ago. Why are you still carrying her? On that pensive note, we will adjourn for today. Join us on our next session where we will explore back pocket skills number three, you are a genius, number four, expect miracles, and number five, lights, camera, action. In the meantime, you can learn more about back pocket skills, including how to access the CD, flipbook, and audio download at wheretheroadrises.com. Until we meet again, dear viewers, goodbye.